Welcome back to Gravity Rush and uh scene <laughs> scene um what did scene. I do about this yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. there, what happened? You turned off the whole commentary. <laughs> we'll put it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm not using the mission select anymore. Also, yes, the DLC release, which we already recovered at the start of the playthrough. Thank you. Yeah, that was like six years ago. What in the... So you go, oh, up, you go up here and... Nine tails. Story mission. Uh, end end of the world. Yeah, so yeah, don't... If you have any side quests or something you want to do... Do it now before you're talking to her. Hopefully the game lets you know that. It just told you, yes. So... So is that supposed to be Angel cosplay lady? No. I don't know. So... I am very confused. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh hi, wait! Elliot. This plot point they brought back. Oh no. Okay, so... After all of this, we're just randomly starting the final season story arc where the plot point at the very, very, very beginning of the manga gets brought back out of nowhere. Oh man. I, I was wondering when they were going to bring that back. Uh... So sometimes it's charming when they do that, and sometimes it's not. <laughs> no, man. And this if you isn't. keep playing, if you only if you keep reminding us or like planning for the season, that continuously remind you of that arc. If you just like introduce it in Act One and then bring it back suddenly in Act Nine, <laughs> like it, it does depend. Don't get me wrong. Like sometimes if it's yeah. a smaller thing, and I mean, granted, I do agree that they can't just bring it up right at. The, the end and be like, hey, do you remember this from issue like, two? Like, sup, bitches? <laughs> so. So it turns out Raven is, like, actually tied to you in some way. Okay, good. Man, that's Dude. hella gay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they're a cute couple. Alright, they should, she should, Raven should move into Cat's sewer duct, and then they can live happily ever after. That sounds kind of wrong. Um, well, it, we don't even know if Raven has a real house. She might just sleep outside for all we know. Anyway. So yeah, unlike the last game where we went down the pillar, we're going up it. Ooh, Ooh it's symbolic because going up is like heaven and crap. This is so awkward, though. Like, okay, we just squeezed in an entire third game's worth of plot. And now we're doing another plot again? Why not spend this time further developing the other plot? Come on. They had a lot of ideas they really wanted to... to okay, it, t <sighs> it, it tells you to use Lunar Style to jump up, but you gain way more height just flying up, falling a little bit once your gravity runs out, and then just... <laughs> you know, shooting back up once the grab once the bar refills, or you just you know reach a platform, stop a sec, and then go back up. They might they might think it's more fun to jump up lunar style, maybe. But it's but it's faster, <laughs> and it's it's not it's not, e it's not even a thing of oh people found like a speed run tech thing. It's just literally faster to do it this way. Yeah, I can see it. You know, it's easy to spot when I could find it. Oh boy. Okay, what what's what, what's this fresh bullshit? Uh -huh. Jellyfish trees or something? Convenient way out. Feel my wind. So I'm still confused about the fake cat that we saw way earlier on. Like I think that was just supposed to be like thou art I and yeah, yeah, yeah but... learning new things by going in your inner mind or some other shit. Okay. But they... Like meditating, basically. You must find yourself to heal yourself and blah de blah de blah. Gravity go whoosh. <laughs> You're a cat now. You're a cat now. You're a cat now. Okay. 
Let's just run with it. <laughs> uh, I mean... And off we go. All of this is it's... very interesting. I... Well, it would be if we had a clue what it means. I would say I, I'm more confused. Yeah, there. Like, that's what. Maybe it's interesting if I, if I'm if I play in the game for myself. But I I have to say that this seems like this all seems very disconnected. It, it is. The more esoteric a story is, the more you have to work to make it work. Uh, that was an awkward way to say it, but you get my point. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't really have the time to sow the seeds of what it means in your brain so that you can connect the dots in your brain and translate those plot points into meaning in your brain. It, so uh, It really does feel like they just had like an outline of stuff that they knew they wanted to do. If they ever had a third game, and then and just threw it in it, here. It's it's yeah. weird to bring it up in this context because the the story pacing issues are completely different in these two cases. But this really isn't that far off from the problem Final Fantasy XIII's opening has, where it throws like a million concepts at you without really explaining them. And you know when you actually know what they are, they're not really all that complex in Final Fantasy XIII's case. But you didn't. That's actually one of my biggest problems with the game is it's not as smart as it thinks it is. Yeah, uh, uh, in general, I would agree with that. Um, the the issue is like it throws its entire world in your face without giving you time to understand it, and then expects you to understand it, uh, and um, it doesn't work at all. Uh, this is kind of similar, but for a different reason and with a different kind of pacing to it. It's like, we're not really dealing with a bunch of complicated sounding words that we need to understand in order to, to, to get what's going on. Instead, what we have is a bunch of plot points that really should have had time on their own to um, it, fix themselves in your brain, but they're all thrown at you really fast and all together at once instead. Um, parts of it feel like watching a show on Netflix and then randomly skipping from episode 3 to episode 7 to episode 13, where you just miss so much of the connective tissue. And it doesn't make the, you know, the these random scenes less, like... First off, this game really is very good-looking. Like, this, like, climbing scene looks really nice. I enjoy the way it looks, and the... I liked the boss thing that we were fighting at the end of the game, and a lot of stuff. So it's not like... and it's not like these ideas aren't cool, it's just that I can't... A lot of the impact is lost because we're not... There's no connective tissue holding it together, like Lewis said. Yeah. It's like we skipped to the good bits, but the reason why the good bits are good is because we you had to work to get there, effectively. Well, uh, I would compare this entire last third of the game kind of like, okay, um, in a novel you'd have, say... 17 chapters, and each chapter would have a focus. But this last third of the game is like a novel that tries to combine three chapters worth of focus into half a chapter um, at times, and it, it winds up really... Uh, you're trying to... It's like trying to look left and right at the same time trying to follow this plot. Like, you wind up feeling all cross-eyed trying to follow everything at once, and that bugs me. Was like I'd like to think about what Kat's friends from her little stint in the military were doing, but they appear for like 30 seconds and then we're dealing with something else. And then suddenly Cece's back and she's someone else, apparently. And then... Uh... I don't think they ever really explained how she got into this other dimension world that we were in in the beginning of the game anyway. Not really. Hmm. I do like that they're trying a lot of things to make the gameplay diverse up until the end, though. That's certainly I, true, like, yes. Although I do think that they should have much spread stuff out, like, by a lot. Um, because... 
I feel like we got like three super modes within ten parts, and this is a forty part game. <laughs> so maybe we should have gotten at least one of those a bit <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Yeah, and we have stronger Nebby types now, I guess. To be f Do we ever even learn where these guys come from, either? E somewhat. To be somewhat fair to the flow of the game design, part of it is just that we did, during our playthrough, do a hell of a lot of the side quest content early on. So a lot of the main plot content got concentrated toward the second half of our playthrough. Uh, somewhat, yes. I also skipped all the side content for when you get back to the original town. Ah. Uh. Because, well, we already did a lot of side content when we played the first game, and I didn't want to make this playthrough longer than it necessarily needed to be. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we're telling you is to play the game yourself. Well, did... To um, an extent, yeah. How much does the side content in the original town flesh out what actually is going on in the main Nothing. Town? Nah, about okay. as, about as about as much as the side content in the first area and for the game, it's just stuff to do to get gems so you can upgrade cat more. It's little side stories that flesh out the world more, but not necessarily the plot. Yeah, yeah. And that and that stuff is that stuff is great to have. I enjoy it, and Gravity Rush seems to do it really well. Um, but it's kind of like it's about as plot relevant as How to Train Your Dominatrix in Yakuza Zero. So, yeah. Um. Huh. Although I suppose it's worth praising a game for just having well-written uh, side content at all, because that is apparently some kind of lost art now. Yeah, to an extent, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it depends a little bit on what you mean by side content, because there are side missions, and then there's, like side challenges. I mean, a lot of... Ways to get more stuff or rankings or whatever. A lot of open world games go the Ubisoft route of just spamming really stock generic content at you for side content. Yeah, co co collect X number of things. Climb the tower. Yeah, whereas um, uh, games like, like RPGs, Yakuza, this game to an extent, actually do go to the effort of peppering a whole lot of little side stories for you to experience. And yeah, the gameplay attached to them might not be much better than the stuff that you would be doing if you were just doing the Ubisoft side content. But the story does enrich it quite a lot. And the f How you frame something is sometimes more important than what the thing actually is, because um, oh, I forget where I heard this analogy, but it's like, you can serve someone a filet mignon on a trash can, but they won't want to eat it because it's on a trash can. <laughs> um, so, it's sometimes you're better off, it's, you would rather eat, like, the slightly burnt steak that was served on a normal-ass plate, in that case. <laughs> and, and in the same sort of way, like, you know, a normal steak, the one that's on a trash can, you won't eat, even if it's the same steak on a normal plate. So... Um, having the framing of the world and the characters, the dialogue, you know, the funny situation, oh, she's racing a bird, is, you know, a lot funnier and adds more charm to the game, making that side quest more enjoyable than if it was just something than like, if it was just a random do this time trial, yeah, which it, has no it, it, story. If it was a random Spider-Man race that you just hit an icon to activate, and you flew through a bunch of little glowy rings, which I think who actually did quite a lot of in Gravity Rush 1, actually, now that I'm remembering. Um, <laughs> Oops. Well, they did improve the... Then they did greatly improved how their stuff works, though, which is... Um, which is, yeah. is good. Also, that pause screen looked really cool, now that I'm, I'm actually like looking at <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I... I, per I if I'm usually pausing in the middle of action, it's probably something interrupted me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I usually like to edit out my pause screen stuff too, if possible, just because it looks better. Um, and sometimes if you get that editing just right, you can cut out the frames, and they don't even know that you 
that you cut out a pause, and then you feel like you snuck one by the audience. Or you could, or you could be like me recording Doom right now, where I'm constantly having to check the map to make sure I'm in the right area for secrets and stuff. <laughs> oh, but, I don't wanna, but I don't, but I don't, but I don't want to stay on the screen for too long. So it's like screen. It's like, it's like map up two seconds. Okay, I am screen. Not even three seconds. Like second and a half done. <laughs> <laughs> where am I going? Okay. Wait. Where am I going? <laughs> Just, it, it's not it's not necessarily a matter of knowing where I'm going, it's making sure I never remember I'm in the right spot to find the secret collectible that's hidden under the stairs that you have to flick a switch for or something. I'm just I'm just imagining Doom holding like a big old map but it's upside down. <laughs> Doom? The game. Holding up a map. No, the yeah, Doom The Doom's Yeah, the you Doom know, guy. Doom, the main character of the game Doom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Doom Guy, yeah. So, di uh, didn't you know, Doom is actually the name of the princess. Eternal is the name of the soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Legend of Doom Eternal's Awakening. Is there Mr. Eternal here? First name, Doom. <laughs> Hello, Slayer from Doom Eternal. Hello, Link from The Legend of Zelda. Zelda? That's like the stupidest meme, I but I, I just love it so much. Like, this? I remember back when Terry came out for Smash Brothers, it was like, Hello, Erdrick from Dragon Quest. Hello, Terry from Fatal Fury. Fury. Did you know that two out of three hoes are mad? I'm not mad. Neither am I. And then they just both stare at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, like, this area is really goddamn epic, and I feel like... It's being cheated out of its own epicness by its lack of buildup. Yep. Like, I forgot that there was, like, a ladder to the top of the world, even in this universe, because... It was a big plot point in the first game, and it hasn't been brought up since. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we climb the tower, really getting to the actual stuff, I guess, this story's trying to do in the next part of Gravity Rush.